Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Simon. Welcome to Tom and Strombash, and today I have a very special guest here on the channel. So let's have a very warm welcome to Josh Dunn from the Grammy Award winning duo 21 Pilots. Thanks for the warm welcome. Yeah, of course, anytime. How's it going, man? Really good. How are you? I'm very good, thanks. Pretty excited about this. <laughs> Me too. So where are you calling in from? Columbus, Ohio, in this uh, dark, dark room of my house. <laughs> so the 21 Pilots album was uh, released about exactly like two months ago, right? Yeah. So, how, so can you maybe just briefly describe like the music of this album, like the style and maybe what's also different from the last album, Trench? Yeah, I think, um, I, I mean, I feel like uh, in, in some ways it's a, I, it's a bit more musical, um, mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, there are definitely a few songs, uh, that, that don't sound like anything that we've ever really done. And I hope that that never changes. Um, because I think that ever since I was young and ever since Tyler was young, uh, we've both just really been inspired by a lot of different types of music. And, um, uh, that was that was something that that I I really uh, loved uh, about Tyler. We really connected on is that we you know that that we really we like really almost everything. <laughs> um, and so as we go, uh, we'll you know we'll kind of just try uh, experimenting with some, you know something new or something else, and uh, and that's that's always been really fun for us. And talking about the process, uh, when it comes to songwriting, is it uh, like how did the songs come about of this uh, of this album? Do you guys write together? Is it like a 50-50 kind of thing? Or is like Tyler more um, capable for the songs and you're more into the drumming kind of thing? Or how's that going? Yeah, on? this last album also, uh, we were we were in two different places in the country. So oh, OK, we were on Zoom calls. Uh, uh, um, a lot during the you know during this process and would um, actually just kind of like send uh, our like sessions back and forth to each other and um, you know over like the internet and yeah. uh, and then have conversations you know virtually so um, yeah that was kind of an interesting process uh, that that really ended up working really well um, I think especially because. Uh, we we look sort of like to work individually anyway. Uh, it, it worked out totally fine. We 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 don't really rely on uh, jamming together because yeah, okay. we've never done that. Yeah. So everybody has his own like home studio at home and record then and then work remotely basically. Yeah, that's what we did for this one. Um, and you know, in the past, we've uh, we'll, we'll kind of get get the songs most of the way there and then take it into a uh, studio somewhere else and uh, kind of just get the, you know, polish it up and, um, okay. and, you know, specifically record drums in, uh, you know, in a, a bigger studio and then get some, maybe some real piano, maybe re maybe recut some vocals, maybe not. Mm -hmm. um, but this one was, uh, you know, pretty much, pretty much fully done um, at, at both of our houses. Um, yeah. Do you think it takes also longer than usual when you work at home because you are like, okay, I want to try this and then I want to try that and then maybe it's a longer process in general instead of going into the studio? I think that there are pros and cons of both. And mm -hmm. in some ways it can save time and in some ways, you're right, it, I think it can take a little bit longer. Um, but I do think that um, in, a, in a studio, I, uh, if it, that's not my home studio, I can tend to feel a little bit rushed. And I think that's, mm -hmm. it's mostly on me. because I'm just realizing that there's, you know, there's five or six guys working there that kind of just want to get home to their families and, uh, and be done with work for the day. Yeah. Um, so I can feel like I, sometimes I'll just feel like I need to just like sit down and play it and get it done and move on to the next thing. Um, at home, I can play it as long as I want to until I f until I feel like it's good enough or until it's right. Mm -hmm. um, so 
in some ways it does feel like that can take a little bit longer. Um, but then the process in the, you know, in another studio too, uh, you kind of have to, you, you go in and then you, the drums get set up and then, uh, the mics get put on there from scratch and then you have to, you know, hit the kick drum for an hour as the engineer like t tweaks knobs and buttons yeah. and stuff <clears throat> at my house. I've got it all dialed in. Um, so I can just go in and start playing. Uh, so that saves time. So, you know, yeah, yes. there are areas wh where it will, where it will go a little bit quicker, uh, because I've already got everything mic'd up and, and dialed in on the, on, you know, on the board. Um, but then I can, you know, maybe just take longer to, to play it. Um, yeah. And I know that I've got plenty of time if I want to tweak something or switch out a snare drum or put towels on all the drums or like drape the drums with a blanket or something. Mm, um, okay. I can, you know, I can mess with that. So, yeah. Well, I mean, I have to say that I really like the sound of the album and especially the drum sounds because it's uh, pretty diverse, you know, with Shy Away. Or, uh, well, especially with Shy Away and what's the other song called? Um, Mulberry Street. Get out of You have a pretty dry kind of sounding drum. And then the other one, which is, uh, I think, Never Take It. Which is an open kind of drum sound with much more rock attitude. And it fits really well together. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, historically realizing that, um, that we have so many different styles of music throughout the, throughout our songs, we've always really wanted, um, we've, we've definitely wanted the, the drums to sort of glue everything together and really make sense, um, from song to song. Um, and uh but but also you know to really feel right for that particular song um so yeah i think that we we tried to we tried to get those sounding right and even in like a song like choker Like I was saying earlier, mm -hmm. I think just kind of putting some uh, some towels on the drums, and then actually we we uh, I, I put up um, I, I did put up a big blanket over top of the drum, so I'm like in a I'm like in a fort <laughs> playing drums <laughs> uh, for the verses, and then at the outro we took all this mm -hmm. stuff off and we opened them up, and the and it was almost like doing two drum sessions for that because it was uh, the same drums but just um, a different, you know, a different feel for it. Like a little splinter buried in your skin. Someone else can carve it out, but when you've got the pin, it hurts a little less and you can even push it further in. When your body's screaming out, trust your mind's listening. Like a silhouette that you can barely see. And so, um, yeah, sometimes a song, like you said, can be, can call for something that's just a little bit more dry. Mm -hmm. um, and then some songs just you need to open up a little bit and have a little bit um, more of uh, you know a room feel to it and some reverb on there and and the uh, decay lasts a little bit longer. Um, so yeah. yeah, it really it really kind of is dependent on the song. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about that uh, tips and tricks when it comes to that kind of drum sound. So we were using towels on the snare and toms to get that kind of. Beatles kind of sounding drums and then uh, what did you do on the rock side so um, yeah and you know I, I think um, yeah there are things that you can do like that to kind of make make things uh, sound a little bit more dry or or less decay 
Um, but also if you, you know, if you have more microphones, um, mm -hmm. like in those portions, you know, just kind of like cutting out the, uh, the like further back mics that are like in the back of the room, mm -hmm. you just don't use those. It's going to, it's going to take off, um, you know, a, a lot of, it'll, it'll sound smaller. Yeah. Um, and then on a bigger portion, you can have, uh, you can bring up, bring that up in, in a mix, uh, you know, that your room mics or, um, you can bring your overheads up and, um, and, you know, that's another thing. Um, and mic placement, that's something that, uh, you know, having a, having sort of a home studio, I can kind of figure out where I like those microphones and even, even just moving one around on the drum a little bit more further back or closer how mm -hmm. does that affect the sound um or the, even the tone of it and but that's all stuff that yeah that i i mean i i really enjoy doing um <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> yeah it's really fun i, I, yeah. I kind of just enjoy doing it before i even before we even kind of like worked on this this album ourselves and it was actually because at the beginning of the pandemic when we were starting to work on music, we were kind of, well, what do we do and how do we get into a studio? And, you know, we can't even get on a plane and most people aren't like seeing anybody. And I was like, well, this is something I've been messing with for, for a few years now. It'd be really fun to just at least try it. And worst case scenario, it just doesn't work. And, you know, we, we um, hire on somebody else and figure out who's willing to, to work over pandemic. And so, yeah, we just tried it, uh, starting with level of concern and, uh, and it turned out really well. Um, so we are like, let's just keep doing that. Uh, it feels good. Um, and Tyler's always kind of, uh, you know, really, really worked from home and kind of honed in sounds. And, um, so, so he was, he was pretty used to just working out of his, uh, studio in his basement. Um, so yeah it all it all kind of just worked out cool yeah i mean like i said it sounds really great thank so, you but you're also into uh like drum programming right yeah yeah i like all of it and um i think that uh since the idea since the idea of kind of like computer drums um started uh i've always i've always loved um you know, the idea, I think, especially, especially listening to hip hop growing up, um, you know, uh, and that's, that's a thing that we've, you know, I kind of, we, we've sort of blended, uh, a, like, you know, there's, there's, I think some elements of, of hip hop in our music. We both, we've both loved, um, hip hop, hip hop our whole lives. Um, but finding those moments where there are, um, drums programmed and then there's some live drums either layered in or or just or just live drums over a hip-hop thing can can feel really cool sometimes too yeah um but yeah having having those kind of uh conversations of what would this what would this sound like with um a real drum beat or what would this one sound like programmed instead or maybe this part is programmed and also sometimes finding a program sample putting it in and then trying to um, match or beat that with live drums. Um, going back to Choker, the beginning of it, there was kind of a, a electronic sample. And then uh, a friend was over engineering with me um and we uh i i we we um slowed it down and then i played the i played the beat that was happening in the sample and then we sped it up so it sounds right, sort of yeah. really high pitch and it sounds electronic um but it's you know it's like real drums in the in the intro of the song um which is you know that's a, that's a really fun thing too how can you how it can is, you, yeah how can you make acoustic drum sound uh, sound program? Sometimes it's a fun thing too. All right, so let's get back to drumming. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we were talking about the, the influences of electronic kind of drums and acoustic kind of drums. When it comes to live shows, I know it's been a while since maybe you guys played live, but how do you incorporate 
all that electronic and acoustic stuff on stage during the show. I've, I've, I've watched your Roland video from like, I don't know, four years ago where we were telling about what kind of products you use. Yeah. But you don't have any computers on stage, right? It's all on the side of the stage. So how do you control and work with that electronic stuff in a live situation? This is really fun um, because I've, I've, always, I've always enjoyed the idea of how, how to integrate um, uh, program drums and live drums on stage. When we first started, uh, I, I ran everything from a laptop uh, mm -hmm. right next to me. And uh, there have always been issues to, to try and overcome. And the first issue was that, um, you know, back uh, when we first started, I had one of those really thick uh, MacBook Pros mm -hmm. um, that, uh, that didn't have a um, solid state hard drive. And so basically a safety uh, mechanism, mechanism that the computer had built in was like a fall uh, detection thing. And if it feels like your computer is is falling or about to uh, you know about to land on the ground, it will temporarily freeze the hard drive. Yeah. Uh, and in doing so, then pauses the tracks. So we'd be playing a show, and the bass frequencies uh, from you know a sub or a P, uh, PA uh, would would trigger that um, in the computer, and it would and then the tracks would freeze. And me and Tyler look at each other like, I don't know what just happened. How did that happen? And then it comes back in. And we're like four measures ahead and then we're oh, both no. confused. So it was, you know, so then I learned that you got to put all your tracks on a, on a flash drive that mm -hmm. is, you know, solid state and then run everything from there. That helped. Um, but then there was a show that we did at uh, Barclay Center um, where, uh, the again, it's a lot of these frequencies that will like rattle the computer or whatever. The interface... Um, connection came you know mm -hmm. came slightly loose oh no so we got to a point then where we're like let's just move the let's figure out how to move the the uh, laptop off of the stage altogether um and then you know we got into running two computers at the same time so what we did is now we have we still have everything going through the laptops uh and then i've got them going through uh ethernet cable all the way off stage, I can mirror it from an iPad so I can see where we're at. And then I start the tracks with a foot pedal. Mm -hmm. um, and then I can move, I, I have a, a bank on my uh, Roland SPDS where I can move up and down mm -hmm. and I can control where we're at in the set um, and then start or stop. I have full, uh, uh, I have full um, control over the laptop. Um, so then I also use the uh, SPDS for, to trigger sounds, um, all using Ableton. Um, and then I have some roll it, I have three rolling pads around the kit. I've got one to the left, uh, one by the bass drum here, and then one by the floor tom. And then off to my right, I also have a, a foot pedal. So I can, play, I can play a full drum beat. I can have a hi-hat here, a kick drum, and a snare drum off to the side. Mm -hmm. um, or over here, if I want, I can really program each drum to go what it, what it should go to. And, um, and then within Ableton, um, I can have it preset so that when I, you know, if I start the song Heathens, um, those drums are uh, on, the, on the Heathens drum uh, sounds and they're pre-programmed with the drums so I can just start playing and those, you know, Heathens drums will come out. Okay. So it's really fun to kind of get it all dialed in uh, to the point where I can just yeah I can hit go on the you know on the on the pedal that song starts it switches over to the Heathen's drum patch I I can play those um, and then even within Ableton it cues you know lighting scenes and and video oh. and stuff. It, it does a lot um, and I think uh, yeah the way that the way that Roland in, integrates with all that stuff is is really fun and, and cool too. So, yeah. okay. And when it comes to like the show concept, from whom do the ideas come from? Like the one with the drum island, that was pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of a lot of the ideas will just happen uh, on tour. Um, I think that's when we're we're like together the most. 
Mm-hmm. And so we'll just be on a bus and someone will come up with an idea and just be like, we should try that. Um, or this, this could be a cool, you know, moment. Um, or sometimes, you know, Tyler and I've, we've gone to show, uh, you know, to see other, other bands shows before. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we'll, sometimes we'll be inspired by something, but then other times like we'll leave and just be like, what would we, what, what could we do different? Or here's a thing that I, I didn't love the way that, uh, they went from this song to this song and what could they have done to make that a little bit more interesting or, or, um, make it just, I think sometimes just watching a show from, you know, instead of being on stage, looking out, Mm -hmm. watching something, looking at it can give you a good perspective. So that's, those have sparked a lot of conversations and a lot of ideas and, yeah, the drum island thing um, was like, yeah, I was on tour somewhere, I think. And um, we were talking about the idea of crowd surfing mm-hmm. and how a drummer just can't do that. And, <laughs> then, that, and then that began the conversation. Well, what if, uh, what if I could, you know, and then, and then, but the only way to, to test it out is just to test it in real life. So, um, so yeah, we, we tested it in, you know, at, at a show that I think at the time was like a club mm-hmm. and, um, and, you know, touch wood, it worked pretty well. Um, and so it's, yeah, I mean, I, and then, yeah, I mean, and any idea that we've really had has just been, um, you know, I think most of the time through just through conversation and okay. trying to, trying to just become inspired. Yeah. Yeah. So are you guys already planning on uh, a new show concept for the upcoming tour or you ha- do you already have tour dates? I don't know how it, how it works in the States now because of the pandemic. Yeah, stuff. we, yeah, we have some shows uh, coming up hopefully. Um, and uh, you know, given how the world looks in the next uh, month or so. Mm. Um, and we've, yeah, we've been having conversations for the past uh month or two on what that's going to look like. And, um, uh, yeah. And then, you know, and then with every album you put out, there's that many more songs that you have to figure out what, you know, what, what, what makes the cut and, you know, what's, what's, which songs are on the chopping block. Um, so there's those conversations being had too. And, you know, sometimes putting together a set list can be, uh, even more challenging when you have more songs. So, um, so yeah, yeah, but we've been talking about that for for a couple months now. Okay. So maybe we can talk a little bit about your uh, the gear you're using. So you're s- uh, with SJC drums since a couple of years now, right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, really since um, yeah, kind of since the beginning of the whole thing. Uh, I was on tour um, in 2012, and you know a while ago, and. Um, uh, there was a guy, a, a, sort of a, a mutual friend that I knew, uh, who was also who was also buddies with the uh, the owner over at SJC, and they were out one night and having conversations. And um, and my buddy hit me up and was like, "Hey, would you want to would you would you want to play SJC drums?" Um, and I was like, I, I was very aware of the company, um, and. Uh, and a fan of the work that they do. I, I feel like uh, they made drums that I, you know, they were, the, you know, very creative with uh, mm-hmm. where they kind of approached putting drums together. And, and so a couple of days later, I was on the phone with the, with uh, Mike is his name from SJC. And he, and, you know, he was like, we'd love to, you know, have you on board. And, um, they've been amazing ever since. And, and, you know, I, I'll get on the phone with them and they'll just, they, uh, they, they really care about, uh, what they do and the quality of it and the, uh, and the art that, uh, that goes into creating drums and, um, how they sound. Um, so it's been a really fun and creative and collaborative, um, process with, with SJC. Um, so yeah, I, I've, I, I've, yeah, I've really been kind of playing the, their drum since the beginning. Yeah. And the shy away kit looks amazing. Like I really like the colors. 
Yeah, I there have definitely been a few times where I've like I've really put them in a bind <laughs> because <laughs> music videos, especially uh, the the ideas, they'll just they'll come together really quick, and uh, and then but but then once they do, then you know Tyler and I will get a phone call and it's hey uh, we're shooting this video next week or whatever or like. Uh, this, is, this is when it's happening, and then and then by the way, you need like you need drums for it, uh, and they need to be here or whatever. Yeah. So then I'll call Mike, and and I'm just like, hey, do you think you could make me a, a drum kit, uh, and then have it turned around and you know whatever ten days, twelve days, and um, and he's always just like, oh man, <laughs> um, but he's they do a great job. They re- they really come through and. Um, and then there've been other times where, uh, you know, it's like, Hey, we have a, we have a music video, um, in eight days in Iceland. And do you think you can have drums there? And so then I'll end up just, um, uh, I, I ended up just checking my drums on an airplane. I just took them from my house. I put them in, uh, in a car, took them to the airport, checked them uh and then and then i just flew with my drums all the way there and uh and then ended up using those so um yeah it's always fun but is what it is yeah and how do you decide which setup or which symbols you're going to use on live shows or in the studio do we always use the same setup of drums like sizes and symbols or do you switch that up there was a while a while where i kind of really liked uh you know i landed on something that i really liked and um then i i just started experimenting with more um i was using the a customs for a really long time and that was kind of just something that i i saw a lot of guys using um and and really liked the sound of them um and and that would that would always change in the studio. I, I feel like I would I would rarely use those in the studio. I, I would sometimes, but um, I would kind of just uh, a lot of times is the, the they'll translate different in a studio. And so mm-hmm. I would I would grab a darker symbol um, in there and 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 typically like that better recording wise. Uh, so yes, yeah, so, um, I've always loved Zildjian. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but yeah, I think, uh, most of the time in the studio, I, I, I've liked, uh, kind of like the K line, mm-hmm. um, and, uh, or just trying anything that's, you know, kind of darker, interesting sounding. Um, and I think, uh, you know, a lot of reason for that too, is that, um, you can, you can kind of choose symbols per song, mm-hmm. uh, but then live you, you kind of. You know, you can't really swap them out. Uh, you know, after after in between songs, um, so I kind of just found something that was, you know, just I felt looks like pretty versatile and would kind of just kind of hit everything um, in a way that needed to. And what would be your favorite Twenty One Pilots album from the drumming point of view? Mm. Is that, could you say that, or is it just song per song? Um, no, I think. That's oh, tough. I mean, I'm loving I, I'm loving Scale to Nicey. Um, I love them all. I I, I really uh, I enjoy playing through all these albums. Lately, I I do go back to Blurry Face and play through that album um, just on my own for fun. So I guess that maybe that answers that question. Um, yeah, maybe. I yeah. I mean, I think songs like um heavy dirty soul and lane boy and ride um and the judge i I find myself just playing those songs a bunch but then you know i also love playing jumpsuit levitate and nico and the niners um and uh yeah i don't know i like all i like all the (laughs) all the records but but besides uh, 21 Pilots, do you have uh, like time for other projects? Because I was watching your uh, the drum cover thing you did with Matt McGuire, like that mega mix drum show, which was amazing because you played so many different kinds of songs. Um, how do you prepare for that kind of thing? 
because it was like I think it ended up to be a 20 minutes uh, drum mashup. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I enjoy doing other stuff for sure. Um, I mean, I guess I I really enjoy playing drums. So um, that one was fun. Matt and I have been friends for a while, and uh, we had you know kind of been having conversations about. Um, Yeah, he's he's very active on on YouTube, and uh, he's he's a really um, he he'll 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 just do drum covers all the time and uh, put together different things. And so we wanted to collaborate, and um, yeah, it felt like a good time to do it. It was kind of uh, it was at a point where we, it, everybody was like, "Well, you don't have to be stuck in your house anymore. You can kind of." Yeah. Uh, go about you know your life in a way just be smart and so we kind of um yeah we met up uh and um and we were like well let's we should do like a mashup thing and and so i was like let's uh let's do why don't you pick like three or four songs that you love and that are kind of like i guess the idea that i i sort of wanted to do was um just uh hey what kind of songs what kind of bands and artists and songs were you into um that like got you into to drums and drumming mm -hmm. and why don't you throw out like three or four songs and i'll throw out three or four songs for me and then we just kind of put those together um and mashed them up and and play them together uh and it was really uh it was really fun to do so it's pretty cool all right i think we have time for maybe two or three more questions if you're up to Absolutely. All right. So, because uh, you're like a self-taught drummer, or did you have any lessons back when you were a kid? Mm. I was self-taught. Um, it was, you know, I think YouTube is such a, a beautiful thing. <laughs> you yes, can learn anything true. on there if you, you know, if if you're inspired enough. Um, I think there's enough information online to to really essentially learn anything yeah so this is also what you would uh tell anybody who wants to play the drums but can't afford uh maybe just go to drum lessons or get drum lessons yeah yeah absolutely i think the the very first thing that i did um yeah before i had any drums at all uh i uh every day for a, a year um uh, or so maybe a little bit more um, I would walk or skateboard or ride my bike to the music store. Um, and, uh, and then I would sit down and play their electronic drums. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the one thing that I, that I bought was a pair of drumsticks. And, um, so every night before bed, I put on my headphones to, you know, to an album that I liked and I would just hit my knees <laughs> as I was laying in bed. I'd have like kind of like my legs up uh, sort of like just, And then I would, um, yeah, then I would just hit my legs with uh, the drumsticks. And uh, and I would just listen to the drums. And then I would kind of figure out, like, oh, that the guy's hitting a ride cymbal here. This is, this is what the snare sounds like. And then just kind of figure out the pattern in which that was happening. Um, then, uh, consequently, all day at school, the next day, I'm just slowing down these songs and these drum fills in my mind. And that's all I'm thinking about. <laughs> Uh, and I'll kind of air drum and then just get, get back home or get back to the music store and try and work it out on, you know, on the electronic kit. Um, and then I would watch live videos and see how they did it, you know, how, how they did it, um, on stage, uh, or watch even music videos are helpful. And, um, and then that's really, that's really how I learned. Um, And then I would just kind of choose songs that I would sort of want to learn or figure out, um, do that sort of same thing and just kind of breaking it down uh, in my mind first and uh, maybe just, you know, grabbing a practice pad or, um, you know, just hit on a phone book or something and, yeah. uh, and, uh, and then figure out those parts um, and then sit behind the kit and, um, and try and work it out that way. So that's really how I did it. Um, And, uh, you know, of course, along the way, I've had some, some friends who are much better drummers than me, who will kind of give me some tips and pointers and, and, uh, Hey, this will, this will be super helpful if you, you know, if you, if you do it this way, or yeah. here's how you do this. Um, and, 
this, you know, there, this has been really helpful in my journey. Um, and this has helped me a lot as a drummer. So, um, I always try to surround myself with people that are better than me, um, <laughs> in, in any, in any way, because I think you can only learn from those people. Yeah. True. Um, so yeah, having, having people in my life who are better than better drummers than me is, is good for me. Uh, cause I'll, I'll still learn from them. Yeah. Do you also still uh, practice? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I, I play all the time. Um, I think it's also just, I mean, drumming is just such a, uh, such a, uh, it can be a, um, physical and an emotional release in a way that, that just feels really good. Um, and so if for no other reason, I'll sit down at the drums just to feel better. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I always want to get better. And I think if that's, um, watching, you know, watching, a uh, huge resource for me starting out was, um, drummerworld.com. Yeah. And, um, just going and, and, you know, just close your eyes, scroll, click on something. And then, uh, and then you're on an artist profile, uh, that's, that's full of, um, videos, uh, music videos or live videos or drum solos. Um, and then you can learn all about this guy that you've never heard of. Um, <laughs> yeah. and it's probably a way different, uh, style drumming than, you know, what you're, what you're used to or what you typically would gravitate toward. And, um, and I always loved that because I was just like, what else, what can I learn from this type of drummer? This, you know, this type of dude. Um, and, um, uh, that was such a, that was such a huge resource for me too. Um, and I still like to go on there and discover, um, new drummers that I can learn from. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. I did that. It's a pretty amazing website. Yeah. To get all different kinds. And the, and the list just went longer and longer and longer. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a never ending list. Yeah. Right. All right, man. So there's one last thing I'd like to do, which uh, is some kind of a shotgun question round, which Ooh, okay. means uh, I'm just going to shoot like 10 questions and you just answer with maybe the first thing that comes to your mind. Great. Like it's nothing too crazy, but. Yeah. Okay. You ready? Yes. All right. So let's go. It's a single or a double play heads. Uh, double. Okay. Wood or metal snares? Metal. Bentley or Ferrari? <laughs> I'm not really a car guy. I don't even know. Um, probably Ferrari, I guess. All right. Vinyl, CD or streaming? I mean, all for different, different things. Obviously I stream the most just because that's the world that we live in. Right. Um, but vinyl is so special because, uh, you're, you're sort of forced to listen to the album front, you know, front to back. And I love that. That's true. All right. Next one is uh, superpower. Hmm. Incredible speed. Small or large symbols. Large. What's your greatest weakness? I care too much. All right. <laughs> uh, your favorite odd time signature? I need to get more into that. Um, but, you know, I guess the, the simplest one would be three, four. Okay. That's a great time signature. <laughs> and last one, what would you do if you're not a drummer anymore? Wow. I guess I would box more. Maybe I'd get more into, 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 yeah, and maybe, maybe I would like do a fight or something. Yeah, okay. But well, at the very least, I'd be, I'd be really popular on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, with, with boxing or just uh, with something just else? Just in general. Just, just, a, just a smash hit on TikTok, I think, <laughs> yeah. if I wasn't a drummer. All right. Thanks, man. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. It was great talking to you. Yeah, it was a big pleasure. Likewise. And uh, I wish you all the best with your career. I really like your drumming style and uh, your showmanship because I think it's pretty heavy if you're just well, just two boys on stage and you yeah, have to go through awesome. a lot of stuff. So thank you so much. It was a big pleasure. Likewise. Thank you very much. It was great talking to you. Yeah, thank you. And have a nice day, man. You too. Thanks. Bye. Bye.
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one as much as I did. Thank you so much for your time. Please leave a comment with an artist you'd like to interview us next. Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you won't miss any future videos. And I'll see you hopefully next week Wednesday in a new one. Simon out. Bye-bye.